Okay, awesome. The final night of Grimfest. I'm here with uh, Paul Gersenberger and Steve Parker, the writer and director of The Resort. And guys, you've essentially uh, remodified the Club 18 to 30 <laughs> motif for a post-apocalyptic environment. Tell us a little bit about it. That should be on the poster. Why is that not on the poster? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, Resort... <laughs> I'm sorry. You're being so nice and yeah. <laughs> You wrote that during the film. Hiya. Oh, yeah. Do you want to go first, Steve? Show me, show me. No. Away you go. Away you go. Um, no problem at all. Well, uh... Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, Resort is a film set post-zombie apocalypse where the humanity won. Mm -hmm. Essentially, it's set a number of years after that and uh, the world's pretty much got back to you know, good place, uh, and there's an island where it just so happens is, you know, it's teeming with zombies, and for the right price you can pray, pay a pretty penny and go and shoot zombies, and our heroes go there, and bad things happen to them as bad <laughs> things Surprisingly, the wheels often, yeah. yeah, the wheels come off. That's yeah. fantastic, so we're dealing with a sort of uh, deadliest game, um, kind of hard target crossed with Jurassic Park sort of thing, would that be correct? And yeah. yeah, yeah. The way it was pitched to me initially was Westworld or Jurassic Park with zombies. Mm. And Fantastic. The, the twist was that it had this social edge. Yeah. So if somebody's in a position to go to a place like this and hunt <laughs> zombies, um, they're obviously going to be pretty affluent or coming in for different reasons. So did this give you a nice broad spectrum to play with in terms of characters? Yeah, I mean, in terms of initial setup, it was that sort of grand hotel sort of setup where, mm -hmm. you know, you, know you, you introduce all the characters in the main lobby and you have a few minutes to mm -hmm. essentially set up you know, the reasons why we're all there. Yeah, I always love those kind of Irwin Allen disaster yeah, movies. Totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, And so I think with a film like this, a lot of the time you are, you're looking for the angle that you can make it special and mm -hmm. you can make it different. But also, one of the things I love about genre films is that they're filled with generic elements that I kind of like and I like mm. moving those building blocks around. Brilliant. And one of the things I adored about it was this, that classic set of the multiple people come to the exotic place mm -hmm. to do the thing. Obviously, you're following one particular character mm -hmm. yeah. on your way in. But I think... I mean, that's the hardest part sometimes, is disguising yeah. who's going to be the... Exactly. Yeah, and the game of who's going to make yeah. it and who's not. And yeah, because once things fun. start to pull apart, mm. then that's when you start peeling back the layers of personality and everything sure. else, and you start to see what way people will react when they're, they're pushed into these circumstances. Mm -hmm. No, it's great. It's absolutely <laughs> fantastic. So, you set it in a kind of Mediterranean-style uh, location, mm -hmm. okay, and there is a little bit of a political subtext, so without giving too much away, how did you deal with incorporating this into the zombie feature? That's so hard to answer without spoiling <laughs> it. You say, like, yeah. no spoilers, but at the well, same not, time, you know, no not way. insane spoilers, you know, but you can, you can give a sort of broad... No, I mean, I think, I think the concept of it being about the disenfranchised, about the mm -hmm. way that the world mm. is, is currently, the, the position the world currently finds itself in, yeah. um, was one of those things that that seemed to dovetail really beautifully into... Mm -hmm. I, I, obviously, Paul had written the film for like a year before I came on board, and it was already... You could see the world was, was naturally going to that sort of right. point. It, it naturally sat. I think the key was to do it in such a way where... It, I mean, I think it's not exactly a movie, but at the same time, I think things like that are this important shouldn't be. Mm. Yeah. Um, I have no idea if I just answered you. <laughs> no, I mean, that's, that's, that. that's the thing with horror. I mean, horror, unlike straight drama, I mean, you could make a very dry, art, very artsy sort of version of this story and, mm. and it, it, you know, say on the nose or ob ob there's, there's an even more obvious version of this story and yeah. actually horror gives you a way sometimes to... Mm. And I think there, yeah. is, there is a version that, that, yeah, that you would imagine would be an exceptional Michael mm. Winterbottom. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Completely. But at the same time, the idea was <coughs> trying to find that balance within mm -hmm. but still make the film incredibly good yeah. fun, mm. I suppose mm. was the biggest, the biggest yeah. challenge was to not be dis disrespectful to what it was we were actually attempting to talk mm -hmm. about in, in, in terms mm. of subtext, and at the same time deliver something that was genuinely fun ride, yeah. an entertaining ride of a movie, because yeah. anything where you're going to go to a zombie theme park, it's going to feel like a Of ride. course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it really serves as a, a fantastic action movie as well. Yeah, it's very, um, well, very well directed, the action. <laughs> yeah. yeah no, I'm blown away by the action. So, so I mean, you've, you've obviously gone for the, the fast-moving, mm. frenetic zombies, you know, just to up the tension. And I was just wondering, was that in it from the very start? Or was that something that developed over time? He had the idea yeah. of 
playing both versions yeah. in the right. same movie before I came on board. Now, okay. That's that thing, whenever you start a zombie movie, the first question you have to ask yourself is fast or slow zombies. That's You're the, defining the yeah, rules, yeah, basically. And yeah. I like both. And I happen to like yeah. fast zombies when I want fast zombies and slow zombies when I want slow zombies. And so to come up with, and the good thing about setting it sort of post zombie apocalypse is that the humanity has already sort of figured out the rules mm -hmm. and now they teach it to each generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, so, it was an easy way to get it in. Yeah, so you could but have also, this sort the of... the time that had passed meant that it was completely convincing. Like, mm. yeah. the slow ones are 10 years old and they're just old mm. and Amazing. the yeah. fresh ones are fast. Yeah. Which meant you could up the ante mm. within the structure as well mm. because I don't think it's going to be very much of a surprise to anybody that things don't go well <laughs> in the islands. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, what could possibly yeah. go wrong? <laughs> um, but no, it, it, it fits into uh, a very small horror canon which deals with, as we said, the aftermath of the zombie apocalypse, mm -hmm. along with uh, Day of the Dead, Return of the Living Dead 3, and I think in years to come people are going to be talking about the resort oh, nice. in the same you. celebratory oh, tones. We can, but lovely thing. Yeah, fantastic. No yeah. problem at all. Well, listen, guys, thank you so much for coming no to Grimfest, no, and the you. very thank best you. of luck. Yeah, thanks very much. No Cheers. problem at all. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you.